This is the Mamaki 3D UJ553. This is our full color 3D printer. It's a large format printer capable of photorealistic output. This machine uses photopolymer resins. They're pre-pigmented, they start life as a liquid, they jet through in a series of industrial inkjet heads, and then we UV cure them to a solid. The machine also jets a water-soluble support material. This material goes through the industrial inkjet heads, it's UV cured to a waxy type consistency, and then water is used after the print in order to dissolve it so you're left with the final printed piece. The bed size on this machine is 20 inches by 20 inches by 12 inches. So you're able to do very large pieces or you can do a series of smaller pieces to increase your efficiency. This machine uses a dual LED UV curing system. On the carriage itself, there's two LED lamps. So as the ink droplets are being placed, they're being cured to a solid using these two lamps. The 3 d UJ553 also uses a flattening roller to ensure layer thickness. We have four different print modes on this machine. High speed at 42 microns, standard at 32 microns, and high quality at 22 microns. We also have a special mode for clear that's 19 microns. Inside the machine, there's a series of five liter ink tanks. The printer actually prints using the resins from those tanks. This way, you're able to change the external ink bottles while the machine is running. So the resins are supplied in 4.8 liter bottles for the support material, the clear and the white, and one liter bottles for the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The bottles are put into the system along with the ink chips and then the ink is pumped from the external bottle into an internal ink tank. Another unique feature of this printer is the capping station. A series of silicone rubber gaskets seals around each head individually when the printer is not in use. This keeps the maintenance low as it keeps any air, dust, or debris from getting into the print heads themselves. In addition, there's a silicone rubber wiper blade which will squeegee off any excess ink from each individual head. These two features together help to ensure low maintenance times and high uptime for printing. So I'll open the cover up while it's printing so you can get a better view of what's going on. So as the print carriage is going back and forth, you'll see the UV LED lamps illuminating on the left and right hand side. The flattening roller, is in between the left-hand lamp and the print carriage. The table itself is moving in and out, and at the same time, it's moving in the Z-axis up and down. This is what gives us the different layer thicknesses. The movement of the bed is controlled by a series of ball screw drives. These are highly accurate and make sure that every droplet on the machine is placed exactly where it needs to go. This is what a final printed bed looks like. These models were laid out in our 3D Link software in order to get an optimal uh, print layout based off the bed size and the model size. The majority of the cured support material can just be broken off the model and thrown away in the trash. The remainder of the model can be put into an ultrasonic bath using water, heat, vibration, and detergent to remove the remainder of the support material. Once that is done, you're left with your final finished model. This is a great example of industrial or consumer prototyping. So this is a project that was done by Hussein Almosawi for Adobe Substance using their Adobe Substance Painter software. The software was used not only for the color portion but also to get the texture uh, for the fabrics and for the rubber part of the sole. This is a great example of what the Momaki 3D UJ553 can do for the collectible market. So this could either be short run production or it could be a prototype piece. Uh, this was actually done by the artist Carlos Otega using ZBrush. Um, this was sculpted uh, and printed out in three pieces. So you've got each of those wings is a, is a separate piece. 
um, so that we were able to print this laying down flat and to maximize the print area of the bed. So having a 20 inch by 20 inch by 12 inch print area allows us to do larger pieces, but in some times like this, you may want to separate those pieces in order to optimize uh, faster build time. This is an example of a print that could be used in the museum or the antiquities market. So this is a 3300 year old bust of Nefertiti that was scanned by the Egyptian Museum and Papyrus Collection. That data was uh, locked away for many years and then uh, a artist named Cosmo Wenman was able to get that data released into the world and can be used now under a Creative Commons license. So this is something that you could use to reproduce art pieces that could then be shown in different locations or allowing um, museum guests to be able to actually handle uh, the models. The automotive market is another group that was very quick to adopt 3D printing technology. So this is another sculpt done with Substance Painter for the texturing. The artist was Dixon Castro. And this is just showing a possibility for a, a design for either a video game car or a, uh, a real life prototype. It's a great way to again take a something that you normally see in, in 2D and get it into the 3D world where you can hold it in your hand and, and look at it from all angles and really get the feel of what an object will look and feel like. In the video game market, printing game assets is also a possibility. This is a ZBrush sculpt done by the artist Kevin Brunt from the game Metal Slug. It's a great opportunity to take what's traditionally a 2D artist rendering and turn it into a physical 3D object.